Hey there, for this video I've just made some nice quick and easy fencing for my diorama. I made some fence jigs to put these together for the picket fence down the front and just the fence running down the side. They're really nice and easy to make, they're quite realistic and the great thing is that you can make them on whatever scale you'd like depending on the size of the jig that you make. So I hope you get something out of this and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm using a nice very flat piece of firm cardboard for this, for the jig. Uh, make sure you use something without corrugations in it. I find that this, the width of a standard ruler seems to be very good for a 132 scale fence or a 124 picket fence. And the fence palings, I just make them all 6 centimeters or 60 millimeters in length. The width I, I didn't measure out, I just did it by eye, but I um, used toothpicks as a measurement between each of the palings, because I don't measure much of anything, I just use tools to uh, do the measuring for me. And this looks about right, so that's where I went with it. I also use one of the palings that seems probably the, the, the most even one I've cut to draw each of them in and I just use a guesstimation of the width of a toothpick that will be on each of these lines and just try and uh, do it a little bit wider for the width of that toothpick where it'll be sitting being the uh, the gap in between if that makes sense I hope it does and just some really good thick uh, water-based glue you could use super glue but you got to be quick and Pretty skilled and not have it stick to everything else but what you want it to stick to. And I just drop one of these down on every single line. This glue dries relatively quickly uh, from the cardboard and wood together. And this is the balsa wood. Uh, it's pretty flimsy stuff. I don't prefer using it but I had to cut so many of them that I did use it and these are the coffee stirrers I use them to run along to really stabilize a fence so it won't break because that balsa wood is so fragile that one in particular this is an old one made completely of coffee stirrers and it's a very strong fence the balsa wood is so easy to cut I think I was being a little bit slack with it but I know that no one's going to touch this diorama so it can be a little fragile. I just put each one of the palings into the jig and just use this ruler to push them up so the top side will be the even side and then I'm putting grass down so uh, it can be uneven at the bottom. I should have trimmed it, I accidentally put one of these upside down, I didn't realise until I'd finished editing the video. <laughs> I thought I'd better mention it because I know that some of you are going to actually spot it. So yeah, there it is. But you could also um, just run a popsicle stick or a coffee stirrer along the end of the jig and glue it down so you can have a permanent little um, border there to push them into. And I'm going to glue each one of these with a little dab of water-based glue. I'm not going to run it down this and drop it on because this, the, it'll stick entirely to the, the wood and the... Um, toothpicks and I don't want that to happen so just a little dab of glue on every single paling and then use your drawn up lines to drop these down where you need them and that's it that's basic fencing done when it's very dry you've got to I'm gonna have to be very gentle with this because it's balsa wood but um, if you made it out of coffee stirrers you could just about rip it out of there and it'd be the strongest thing you've ever built it's amazing this comes out looking great, it's like a train track. I put super glue between every single one of these just to uh, again try and reinforce it and make it a little stronger and ensure that nothing's going to fall off while I'm painting it. This is a bit of a wonky fence but it's, uh, it's an old building so once again my lazy techniques work out. <laughs> I used matchsticks for the picket fence because, again, I would prefer to use anything but balsa wood because it's so fragile. I just 
uh, cut a point into the tip of each one of these and I made a smaller jig out of nothing but um, toothpicks to mark in between. I'm just going to give them a stain like I do with everything because it just it ages everything that uh, that black brown wash underneath just pulls through when you put a dry brush on top that's much better <laughs> less painstaking just pour it on and get stuck into it and then I just let them thoroughly dry and uh, they're ready to paint whatever color you'd like to paint them I'm just going to do these uh, with a, a standard sort of a, a grey. I know this is a huge brush. This is the way I do everything. For some reason, using huge brushes and your hands to paint adds great depth of realism and, and fine detail to uh, miniaturised objects. I'm doing it as roughly as I can. I'm somewhat avoiding the top and the bottom with the brush. I want it uneven because it'll look like peeling paint. So if I sort of do a little more in the middle, it'll, it'll give the effect of the paint coming away from the top and the bottom where there would be the most wear. I think having such a large brush is what gives it that uneven effect and the unevenness is what gives it realism. It's the only thing I can, I can really make sense of the way I do this and how it works but it looks good and I'm just going to give them a little bit of uh, just a, a sort of a cream color just to go with the, uh, the theme of the building it was a black and white photo for this very ancient fence but um, I'm going to assume it's cream so I'll just put this on but it's more of a grayish whitish it could be anything it's a fence who knows as long as it looks real that's all that matters and it looks aged enough, which is nice. Same with the back, a little less. I'm not going to go too crazy with it because I, uh, I don't want it to look new. So less is more. You can see the grain in the wood, even though it's balsa wood. If you use those um, coffee stirrers, they have a far greater uh, grain in them. You can really see it. It's amazing. I'm going to stain them now. I basically want to stain the bottom so it looks like moisture and that sort of thing has been creeping up. And when it's poking out of the grass, it'll also add a little bit of shadow. So it'll give it depth and all those lovely things. I'm just unloading the brush a little bit. I had too much on there. And just run it down this will dry uh, quite a bit lighter being a wash so if you're unsure about them just make them lighter and keep adding it in layers until you're happy with it or until you're used to using a wash like this it's basically a stain and this again is uneven I don't want to form patterns and make it look unnatural by doing that I'm just using my finger almost like an eraser and just smearing it around, lightening it up, and then I can darken it again at the bottom. And you can see how it's starting to look quite real just because it's uh, simply grub it up. Definitely my favourite job doing this. Definitely. It was an attempt to let it bleed, but it uh, it wouldn't go, so I had to make it make it move around. Probably because the balsa wood is quite absorbent. But that looks nice, and you can see that dirty-looking shadow and grime at the bottom of the fence. And I'm also going to give it an actual shadow 
uh, underneath that top railing. I'm going to call it a railing, I don't know the anatomy of a fence. But as you can see, that's just, I'm dropping a shadow and that's where a lot of realism comes in, just adding shadows, even though uh, light can be cast onto these. If you emphasize shadow, it will emphasize uh, the realism. That looks lovely. And that's pretty much it. I hope you got something out of this because um, they're a nice little thing to make and they look so good with just about anything. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.